So, hello, once again, it is Adam from Riff Media, and I am here with some chaps that are very cold by the name of Dorje. How are you doing, guys? Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? We are good. We are all good. Thank and you. slightly cold. Yeah. It's good. Okay, then. So, as we do normally, can you please give us your name and your role in the band? I am Rob Chapman, and I am the... I'm trying so hard not to swear or say something very inappropriate. So, I'm a guitar player and a singer. I'm Ben Meinl. I'm the drummer. Uh, I'm Dave, and I bass things. I'm Rabia, and I play lead guitar. Okay then, so, you've been out and you've done, I think it would be three shows now, is it? Uh, About three? Yeah. yeah. We've just played Guildford, uh, Bristol, and Liverpool. and Liverpool. And now we're in Leeds to play Santiago's. You are. Yeah. And uh, how many dates do you have left on this? It's about six it's more few, after this. We're doing a ten show, two week tour across the UK, so this is our fourth date. So we have six more after this, and we finish up in London on the first. Um, Ignore Dave. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so this is your second tour. You toured last year, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Yeah, last year's tour was really interesting because we didn't prepare, had no songs. Well, we had two <laughs> songs, one of which we wrote a day before the tour. Yeah. And uh, we became a band on the last date of the tour, really, I think. Yeah. Kind of gelled at the end of the tour because it's kind of the way, the way this well, most these guys gelled. I don't feel very connected to these people, really, personally. Why, why is that? Because it's Body odour. <laughs> Living on a tour bus is a, it's an intimate experience for the nasal passage. Oh, okay. Yeah. So apart from that, pretty good. I don't know if anyone saw the uh, campaign drawing that I did called Fuck Knows, but it was inspired by that story. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what else do you think you've learned from last tour other than to keep smells to a limited amount? <coughs> well, on a personal level, I've learned how not to lose your voice. Because I lost my voice so badly in, in Wales, it was un, unreal. Didn't have a voice at all. And uh, I learned to eat raw vegan on the road, sort you right out, learned to sleep the appropriate amount of time, and not to get completely wasted in a metal club after a gig in Liverpool, yeah. and end up with Stormborn's <laughs> balls on your leg, because that would be really bad for your voice uh, the day after the day after. Just testicles on your leg. Just your testicles on my leg. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, how are people reacting this tour? Because obviously, about four months ago, you released the uh, video for Aromancy. Yeah. They fucking hate us. <laughs> <laughs> What's really interesting, I think, about it is that um, actually, before yeah. with the last tour we did, it was like everyone knew Rob because everyone knows Rob. But like us, us three were like kind of like, oh, these guys, you know, like no one really knew. But like this yeah. time, because it's because of the Aromancy thing and the Door J thing is kind of launched and is out there. It's weird for us three now that people kind of know us as well. Yeah. It's very odd to be recognised by, yeah. you know. Like I walked into the guitar shop earlier on today, and this guy was like, "Oh, you, it's Rubia," and I was like, <laughs> "What?" That was him <laughs> coming. <Yeah. laughs> we had a really funny experience in in Northern Guitars. These guys all went into Northern Guitars to go and shoot some video with Dusty when Rob picked up this fine flying V, and basically we were uh, we just put like a photo on our Facebook page to say, "Here we are at Northern Guitars." And literally two minutes later, this this dude runs in. He's like, <gasps> "Yeah, I just made it. I just legged it from work." And he was such a lovely guy, a guy called Kieran. So if you're watching, hello, Kieran. It was awesome to meet you. And the, the little legend just literally like got 15 minutes off work and legged, legged it down. straight to Northern Guitars. He was like, "Oh!" And um, it was just really, really surreal because mm. you know it was literally two minutes, two minutes before we'd put a photo on Facebook and said who we were. So I think surreal sums it up because I mean. Like I'm, I'm a little bit used to people knowing who I am in guitar areas because obviously at the Nam show or Music Mesa or whatever, I was surrounded by cool people that happen to watch my videos and they want to buy a product. But it is very different on this tour. We have full grown men shaking when they touch me. That's body, that's body odor issue again. Being recognised as Dodger, I think. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. Being recognised yeah. as a band as opposed to like. Like the guy that walked into you at the club afterwards. Yeah. Tell yeah. him about that, Dave. <laughs> well, Dave, say something. <laughs> Say things now. Um, uh, that was, I think what was, what was annoying about that one was just that the guy didn't come to the show. He um, he turned up and like walked in and sort of basically walked into me and then like was about to apologise for walking into someone and then realised who it was and just went, what? <laughs> what, what, what are you doing here? It's like, we just played a gig. It's like, what? You just played a gig? It's <laughs> like, yeah, you should have come down. Promotions and marketing are really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> We're a marketing machine. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, that sort of thing is very surreal because uh, I mean, you are just like, it's like um, coming back from LA and we were in the airport yeah. and then like Beer had just gone to the toilet and someone just walked past and just sort of started talking. He was, he was from New Zealand. I think he was from New Zealand, he was but he was, he was, yeah. he was flat. Yeah. So like, and he hadn't been at an armchair or anything like that. He'd just been like, he was just going to see America. family and stuff. It was just a random dude at the terminal, you know. <laughs> like pub last night, we met a guy that just went, it's, it's Chappers, and his friend was like, who the fuck is Chappers? The guy from the tube. I don't know who this guy is, what the fuck are you talking about? I had a little conversation for about half an hour about who I was and who I wasn't, you know. Yeah, that yeah, was, was great. Yeah, big gang member, that's cool. Yes. <laughs> I think what's, 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 really, what's really weird and obvious is that YouTube, for the younger generation, is becoming the new TV. Like, a lot of people, a lot of, you know, people sort of like under 24, are spending so much more of their time watching YouTube than they are watching traditional TV. So because we have we are strong on YouTube and a lot of what we focus on is video content and on like using our videos to just be just be ourselves but put it across on video. And it's a much more powerful thing than say just like print or you know like some some of the older media stuff. And so when people see us because they've seen us on the screen to them that's like somebody famous but obviously to us we're just Guys. Dudes that shoot a load of video, and obviously, you know, we, we have had full grown men cry, pass out in front of us, literally just hit the floor, pass yeah. out, ejaculate. I don't, you know, like that would be all <laughs> right if it was like Slash or like someone like ridiculously famous. Yeah, I did scream and I cried a lot when I saw Slash and Bama. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. so that's the thing, yeah. but like those guys are just like four regular dudes that are just kind of it's really, really them. awesome though, and we really, really oh, yeah, appreciate yeah. it, but it awesome is it's very thing. surreal yeah. because we've been a band for one year, yeah, yeah. almost exactly one year. And to get a guy pass out in front of you is, <laughs> is yeah, we must smell really bad. <laughs> no, it's, it's humbling. But you yeah, see, this tour, we're, we're actually endorsed by, by Lush on this tour. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Yeah. No, we really are. To keep the bus smelling good. Yeah. yeah. To keep, yeah. keep Dave yeah. smelling good. That's, that's what we learned from the last tour, because I, I used all the Lush stuff last time, and uh, I maintained to be the only person that managed to smell uh, at least reasonable. In so an effort know. to have the women come on the bus, obviously feel more at home, Mm. Uh, so we thought we'd entice them with Lush products. Yeah. So the bus is, is crammed full of Lush and products. And oranges. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it didn't work. And oranges. So, and yeah. oranges. <laughs> and Superman. It's like we almost yeah. intended to do that then. Do you know what as well? There's, there's a Lush uh, aftershave that's actually called like Orange Zest, which I happened to put on this morning. And then I walked out eating an orange and someone was like, you smell like oranges. I was like, I'm wearing this orange aftershave. Like, is it not the orange? I said, no. Well, guess what? I'm wearing an orange t-shirt. Really cool. Triple the orange. Tell them about the citrus. Oh, my Marshall. True, true story. Huh? <laughs> You're a Marshall endorser, you know. Uh, it's kind of like up in the air. Basically, yeah. I I love Marshall products, and I've been working closely with Joel Manning. Just kind of chit chat here and there, and like they ha kindly lent us a JVM for the tour. Um, the reason I'm wearing an orange T-shirt is because at Nam I went up to the orange booth and said, "Can I have a T-shirt?" They said, "Yeah, you can have a T-shirt." Uh, the thing about that's the story behind that. Well, it's part of the story behind that. The thing about Dorje is that we're in a very luxurious position of being in open relationships with lots of companies that would like to work with us. And we're in a process of selecting brands that we think are more appropriate for long term relationships and marriage. Yeah, okay. It's like real life. And most of these brands <laughs> women. belong to us, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, did, I did get attacked by an orange. Yeah, a few days ago. Yeah, he got citrus locked. <laughs> I got I got, yeah. I got I got zest. Zesty scraped. No, That's citrus lock is what it's called. Citrus lock. Okay. Do it. Do it. So, right. well, I was I was irritating beer with the back with the backwards blagging mantis, That's which is blagging. like you put your hands like this. And you <laughs> blagging mantis. It's the blagging mantis, yeah. and uh, so I was I was blagging beer's head with the blagging mantis over and over again, and eventually, you know, you shouldn't really do that to beer because when when he when he gets overly irritated, he gets fro rage. He, yeah, he <laughs> gets fro rage. He basically grabbed me in this headlock, twisting me around. Got this massive orange, and the way he grabbed me was like my mouth was slightly open. <laughs> he he's got this he orange, he just went, <laughs> 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 and I'm there like, what are you doing? And his guest was just going in his mouth, and he's getting <laughs> choked by orange <laughs> beer. Uh, it was harsh. Oh, so, yeah. was very, so very amusing. And then the rape. Yeah. <laughs> Again, that's not, that's not the So, to, to get off of that, um, <laughs> <laughs> swiftly on. So, you released a video for Aromancy, as I said earlier. Yeah. Do you know how many views that's got now? 128,000, something like that. Just take the fact. Yeah. yeah. About that, yeah. That's crazy. Awesome. And uh, you have done an acoustic version. Yeah. Mm. Well, uh, the thing about the acoustic version is that we had a day and we had Dave. And that's pretty much all you need to record, to record anything. fucking anything, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, he is. A, I don't mean this just because he's a pretty man, but he's a world-class producer engineer. 
So we're incredibly lucky to have all the skills and all the gear contained within the unit. I mean, Rabia is a great producer. Dave is absolutely sick, and I can sing now. And uh, <laughs> and we gave Ben some toys like a tabla. It's all in house, isn't it? I guess. All in house. Everything in house. Yeah. yeah. Between the four of us. Did and it was a reimagining of the tune. It wasn't just here's a version in acoustic instruments. It was a reimagining of how it would be if we kind of rewrote the song from a from an acoustic perspective. So we got on some new vocalists. We got Hannah Bolton and Sylvia Ville to do some backing vocals. Some of it in Lithuanian, which is really cool. Mm. And yeah, um, wicked. yeah in, very, very in, cool. In the spirit of the Door J DIY ethos, we shot our own music video for it. I mean, what 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 what, what we've launched just before we came away from tour is a video. Um, to win a rare prototype Chapman ML2. Um, we're giving that away as a prize for the fan that comes up with the coolest sort of DIY music video. But we made our own, which is at the end of that launch video, where we just, it was really cool. We just got a camera and had it above like this big table. We put all this paper down and we basically we just thought, what can we do that's fun? Well, oh, wait, let's just paint some shit. Finger painting. So we got some coloured finger paints and all took it in turns and painted. And it looked really cool. And then we let it dry, put some laminate over it, and drew all over it, and time lapsed it over the song. And actually, it worked. It was just really an effort well. to show that you can do something fun with no money if you use creativity and sort of finger paints <laughs> stuff. Yeah. And it worked. Yeah, that's so good. So we're good. now currently looking for some sort of deal with anyone that manufactures finger yeah. paints. Crayola. <laughs> Crayola would be great. <laughs> would be great. You know, you know I would you totally want a Crayola were, deal. If they want to hook us up, that, yeah. that'd be cool. Or Play Doh. Play Doh. If we can get a Play Doh endorsement, yeah. the, 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 the life would not be the same. I mean, definitely, no. time, time spent on the bus playing with Play Doh would be, would be a good way to pass the Just time. Just because it smells great. I'd mould a phallus and attack beer with it. <laughs> I'd dry it in an oven and hit him in the head when he's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Just to get him back for the zesty lock. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Just a few months later when everyone's forgotten about it and you're just there, just like, now's yeah. the time. Now's the time to, <laughs> the time to strike there is the no ninja phallus. The blagging mantis is waiting <laughs> this long. <laughs> no, that's silly. Oh, that's a really weird thought. Yeah. So um, you just said that you can interpret tracks that you wrote. Are you going to write a full length album anytime soon? We've pretty much got a whole album yeah. now, haven't we? We, we wrote loads of tunes just before we sort of like in the last three months. Well, he says we, he means Revere. <laughs> <laughs> At the moment, Revere is on a massive writing role and it's great. And so yeah. he's written a lot of content. Not even with passion. It was just one of those things like we need, we need a set of material. So we hammered it in the studio for like, I don't know, three months. Came up with like another six tunes. We've got like an eight song set tonight with the, with the other two, you know, that were already released. And when we get back, probably write another four or five and then pick the favourites and we've got an album. It's, at the <laughs> moment, it's really, really easy to write. Like yeah. Rabia gets up some stupid fucking riff that's impossible to play. <laughs> and then I go home and fucking try and learn it in a week, if I'm lucky. And then uh, make a decision about whether I'm going to play or just sing. Because I started doing some tracks where I just sing. Um, and... I come up with the vocal melodies and, and lyrics, and sometimes the guys help up with lyrics as well. And uh, we're just on a we're on a roll. It's really really easy to work together and, and create music all the time. It is really cool how we write because a lot you know a lot of it comes from the improvised feel of being in a room together. I mean, it's beer, it's beer that comes up with the bulk of the musical body, but it's mm. it's it's definitely <clears throat> comes from us sort of being together. And then you know normally beer will take an idea and go and work on it and come up with like. A li like a rough working demo for us all to kind of get the feel mm. then we all get back together because we have to be quite efficient about how we rehearse and how we practice because Rob lives in Wiltshire he obviously comes to Guildford once a month which is where we live to, w to, do, to, to do the videos with Anderton so we have to really hit it hard and make sure that you know we get those, those sort of couple of sessions a month mm. we get in we get a lot done and I think that's awesome all of the lyrics <laughs> are improvised too and this is serious I don't, I don't like to sit down and try and work out lyrics that rhyme with this word or sort of think about a particular concept. I literally just improv, freestyle words as I'm playing or listening to the track and then I, I write it down and observe it and if it's good it sticks in the song and literally that is what happens. That's and I'm not kidding. That's pretty cool. Love it's it's risky. Risky. <laughs> Have there been any things that have just been too yeah. wrong in the mind? To say? <laughs> On reflection, there have been a few, yeah, that probably shouldn't have got out there. Would you ever get into rap? Absolutely never. <laughs> <laughs> but Rabia Rab Rab has a little bit. Uh -huh. Yeah, he has. Yeah. Beer can beatbox like a crazy, yeah. crazy fool. Yeah, what? but we need proof of that now. Are you going to beatbox? Well, I'll put it, it'll be on one of the tunes. I've got some here. I've got some here. It's fucking badass. <laughs> 
It really is. Don't screw with vocal pressure, so it's not real. Don't, don't tell anybody <laughs> anything about anything. Hold on. It was totally real. Oh, no, that's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> The microphone guy, that's all the <laughs> Because that's just the way we flow, man. Yep. I don't know. How did you think orange and face thing? Yeah. It all works. Well, yeah. 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 That came from the. That came from. <laughs> it could have just been anything. Else. That came from the blagging mantis. <laughs> so, oh. um, yeah. If you could have anybody guest on an album, because obviously you know quite a few people. Chris Connor. Like, uh, Gavin Harrison. Chris Connor. Chris Connor. Go three. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd get Dave, actually. Yeah. No, for me, vocally, Eddie Vedder, Chris Cornell. If I could resurrect one guy, Lane Staley, vocally. For me, as a guitarist, Peter Green would do justice to anything we could present him with. Um, on drums. Who? As a drummer, it would be Gavin Harrison from Porcupine Tree, or uh, Jose Pasillas from Incubus? Uh, it would be a friend of mine called Sam Warren, who is just a monster. Um, is he actually a monster? He is actually a monster. Um, it's not funny. Yeah. <laughs> he is a sick, and, sick and, the, and the thing is, it, sonically and stylistically and composition-wise, it would suit the music better than I suit it. So. Do we need um, him better than you? Yeah, basically, okay. yeah. What I'm Bye, saying, Dave. What I'm saying is you should get rid of me and get him instead. Okay. Or at least check out his band, Thumper Monkey. Thumper monkey. Thumper monkey. Thumper monkey. Is yeah. that a euphemism, do you think? No, it's just proggy awesomeness. Beer? Yeah. Thumper monkey. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it, I don't know. Better. <laughs> just bet and caught. Bet and caught. Oh, right, I think we're talking about Thumper monkey. No, <laughs> we're talking about who, <laughs> who, 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 oh, who right. would guess? Oh, who would guess? Who would guess? Who would guess? Yeah, it'd be Nuno, probably. Yeah. And then Guthrie. Yeah. Because yeah. those who, two. Who we hang out with, though? Like yeah, he appeared on uh, <laughs> at Guildford, didn't he? He's like friends yeah. with us Ooh. and stuff. He appeared and he completely piled a shit ton of pressure on me. He came and <laughs> saw he conquered. I thought what's like, interesting is... How am I even supposed to play when he's in the audience? I think I've worked out what Door J is, and I don't think we really knew last tour, well, we didn't know last tour, we didn't completely. And I think I've worked it out. I think we've created a genre, and I call it Gent Zeppelin. Gent Zeppelin. <laughs> yeah, and it's, um, it's a blend of Seems sort of... Legit. If you imagine... Stevie Wonder vibed vocals, like soulful, bluesy kind of, it has to have a uh, somewhere in it. <laughs> and I mix that with like carnival slash tool. That's what we're aspiring to attain with Dorje. King's X meets. It's a Stevie Wonder with a metal band. Tool. Yeah, 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 really, really, that's it. <laughs> that would be so Zeppelin. interesting. That's what we're going to try and do. Oh. Did you actually uh, see Stevie Wonder at all? Yeah. When yeah. he was at Nam? Yeah. We were just, me and Rob were just walking through the show. And I was like, looking at him, I was like, that's cool. And I turned around and he was literally there. He was there, like, all Stevie and shit. <laughs> all Stevie hey, and he, shit. Honestly, he's a massive inspiration for me with beer, so, yeah. You know, in my top five albums of all time, is probably... I grew yeah, up on Stevie one day. Yeah. Man is a god. Yeah, he is. Oh, he's got good hair. He does have good hair. <laughs> well, he had good hair. Well, I suppose, now you mention hair, you can't really not talk about conflicting hairstyles in this band, really, can you? So... I don't have a hairstyle. I got it knotted by a Lithuanian. <laughs> my, my hair was knotted by a Lithuanian. Yeah. 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 So, what inspired your dreads? What inspired your dreads? Did that just kind of like grow like that? Or yeah, mine's yeah. the most uninteresting story. <laughs> <laughs> just, I basically woke up day after day. I just grew yeah. <laughs> I, I left literally it, I left it for seven years. Oh, no, 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 five years, and now that's what it looks like. The, the cool thing about beer is if he washes his hair, he just goes a little bit flat. And then as it, it dries, it just kind of rises like bread, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, um, I've always, always had shit hair, and I thought if it's going to be, sh it's really, really thick. But if it's going to be shit hair anyway, I may as well just knot it up. People with thick hair and cool hair. Well, thank you. I'm saying that because I have it as well. So. That's good. That's a good thing. Yeah. But it was really easy. I literally just spent how many hours was it? In total, 12 it's hours. Kind of split, solid split while, having my hair just dreaded yeah. by Sylvia, mm -hmm. who was our stylist, friend, violinist, vocalist, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it was awesome. And now I feel like I've always, always had dreads. I was inspired by Dave to do it. Yeah. I just kind of thought one dread isn't enough, yeah. we might as well <laughs> have two. And uh, it would look silly with just two dreads and then just hair. That's what yeah. I was thinking. If you just had one yeah. dread, it would just look like, yeah, it would look dreadful. Oh. oh. Uh, <laughs> so, so a week, you 
you got your dreads how and what kind um, of you like yeah well, <laughs> <laughs> all right well I've, I've always done like kind of my own hair for a long time you know stuff mohican and stuff and then um, i hate having stuff blocking my peripheral vision um but i kind of wanted long hair and it seemed like dreads was gonna be a good method to have long hair and have a good way of keeping it out of my face and you know that sort of thing so um, I'd given some friends dreads in the past, so I kind of knew how you made them. Uh, my brother used to have some. We used to help him like tidy his dreads and stuff. So I told Beer sort of the process on how to make dreads and, and made a mistake. <laughs> let Beer <laughs> <laughs> let Beer dread my head. And and for we actually played a show, so that somewhere there's some footage and there's definitely some photos anyway somewhere on the internet where, where I look kind of like sideshow Bob. And it's just it's <laughs> someone out of Dragon so, Ball Z, so, some, <laughs> somewhere between an afro and dreads, like they were all just stood up right out of his head, <laughs> like this long. <laughs> the, the issue that I had was that, that there was bits of hair in a dread like over a here. From, mine. There was hair, <laughs> hair over here that was in a dread over here, and that sort of thing. And I went to go see my uncle, and actually I swapped a motorbike for a load of um, lighting gear with my uncle. And on the van Standard. van ride down there, um, our old singer was driving, and I just sat there with a crochet hook, a pair of scissors, and a comb and just redid them and just did them from one journey from Bradford down to Kent and that's that's how I got them. What you were driving? He pirate teched his hair yeah. is basically what they're saying. Dave yeah. is a pirate tech. He's uh, a pirate uh, and more and recently tech. it's Sylvia that kind of takes care of him because I'm too lazy. It's Harrogate spring water. It's clear, refreshing and crystalline. I recommend anyone drink it. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm not front Riff. to Gent Zeppelin, I drink Harrogate spring water. <laughs> it's good. Oh, okay then. So, um, do you have any other crazy stories then? If you <laughs> give it, give us yes. your best one. Then. <laughs> uh, give us your best one as a band oh. or individually. Um, <clears throat> it should be as a band. It yeah, should it be should really probably. Yeah. Uh, oh my god, there's so many things that have happened to us now. Yeah. Um, was the? Uh, <laughs> it's also it's trying, it's trying to work out what's Face appropriate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just say anything. Just say I'm anything. I've had a mind fart. Yeah. <laughs> a mind uh, Come on, what's the first person I heard say mind fart was um, Hulk Hogan. That's Hulk a funny, Hogan. Yeah, that's a fact of the day. Interesting yeah. insight into Dave's mind for you, though. <laughs> <laughs> Dave goes, <laughs> Hulk Hogan. Um, what, what's, what would what's Hulk Hogan, Hogan do in this situation? Mind what's happened fart? to us recently? What would Hulk do? What's happened to us recently that's been stupid? I'll tell you what, what was uh, just a really cool experience was going to Los Angeles to the NAM show, for bringing the guys, because I, I go there all the time for work. Yeah. It's just part of my job. Um, but having the guys come with us, with me, because I'm one person, and um, and seeing their faces when like Ben meets like Greb and was it Greb? Yeah, Benny Greb and Matt Halpin from Periphery and well, basically all my drum idols. It was, it was ridiculous. In like one day, and uh, <laughs> I couldn't walk afterwards. I was like, beer, <laughs> beer, meeting emotional. Nuno. Yeah, um, that was horrendous. Yeah, and yeah. did you meet anyone, Dave? I got pushed by Kerry King. You're pushed by Kerry. <laughs> uh, I, I, I was in his way, and, was he, it and he very push? easily removed me <laughs> <laughs> from the path that he wanted to walk along. We are perpetually bullied by Slayer, yeah. but uh, you know we'll have Luckily, our day. I still don't care. <laughs> yeah. We did have a funny incident uh, in, on our LA trip. We brought um, Rob's dad out with us, Russ, yes. and on our on our last day, um, we went to Disneyland. So we were all sort of chilling, getting some food. And basically, Beard had a bit of a bad lunchtime experience already because... We oh, don't go there, don't go there with the fucking root beer. Well, the, I'm going to have to. <laughs> if I get zest locked again, it's not my fault. <laughs> basically, what happened was, we are buying some drinks and Beard I'd goes... I'd rather tell this story. Oh, would you? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. We, can knock <laughs> we were stood in the queue and I was running out of money. I probably had like $8 left. And I was hungry and thirsty. Should have asked me, man. And uh, I was like, oh, I don't know what to drink. And Ben goes, beer, beer, get root beer. I was like, it's nice. What's root beer? He's like, oh, you, you'll like it. He's like, it's like Dr Pepper. I'm like, okay, <laughs> cool. I get some. I said, if what if I don't like it? Can you get like a coke or something, and can, we can just swap? He's like, no, no, no. Trust me, you'll like it. <laughs> so we went and sat down and started eating, and I drank this fucking cowpole tasting bullshit, <laughs> and I was like, this is disgusting. Why have you made me bad? <laughs> it's and he was so just pain in your voice. He's, he's, he's laughing so about it. What you're not getting is how long he went on about this for. Uh, it must have been fucking hours. And, and then to make matters worse, the beer is really irritated by the fact that his drink sucks. And he sat there sort of, you know, trying to enjoy his meal. And then Russ, My dad. during yeah, yes. Rob's dad, during the week, we invented this thing called Le Pantalon de Drum. 
And basically, Rust has come up with this idea of these trousers that have got like MIDI controllers in them, so drummers can, can play, and you get like MIDI drum data through. So Rust is there, just going off on one, he's panting along the drum. Polka music in the background, wasn't it? Yeah, it's like, run ka ka, run ka ka, and he's off doing this, just sat on it, just, we're all ha having lunch, and suddenly Rust just goes, and slaps this whole plate of salad. It was a up. massive bowl. It was a giant bowl of salad. And I'm just looking at this, the slow-mo salad goes all over beer, and I'm just like, <gasps> <laughs> yeah. to make matters worse. No, you probably had to be there. But if you can imagine projectile Afro salad yeah. on, on an already blagged up dude, <laughs> Because he's just drank yeah, cowpaw. We were, we were with the captain Lee as well. I think his team. face was like this. I think it's probably the most <laughs> unhappy person I've ever seen at Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fia, yeah. yeah. say welcome to Disneyland. Welcome to Disneyland. <laughs> That's what the guy was like. He was like, I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, root beer and salad, so goddammit. We're oh, Dorje. Yeah. Don't make us drink root beer and don't feed us projectile salad. Ooh, How on earth? Have your fans ever given you gifts? Yeah. Yes. What has been the best gift and what's been the worst gift? Cracking. So oh, no. many inappropriate things crept into my I, life. I, I've, I've had, there was one on this tour so far, which was um, some like traditional incense that you burnt on a hot coal. Mm. Um, okay. That was really cool. And on the last tour um, was when I, I first sort of started hanging out with Sylvia and she bought me a palm tree, which I put on top of my amp to make it very piratey and that was awesome. <laughs> but a lovely guy from a Liverpudlian charity as a street in Liverpool. Fuck, it's a street called Penny Lane. And it's a charity that does all sorts of good things. Look up the Penny Lane charity, and he gave me a couple of t shirts. And um, Tom, one of the VIP ticket holders, bought us a massive chod of cakes, didn't he? Yeah. Which is really, really nice. Carrot cake, our, our guitar our guitar tech, Paul Glover, his wife brought us a whole tray of homemade carrot cake. Which I, wish got I could eat. Devoured. Not by me. Which is a by me. I got a bottle of whiskey that was 60 something percent. <laughs> and I didn't realise that I was just like I'm going to wash this down and I was like, eating a kebab I, was like, I was like I'm going to wash this down it's going to be great and didn't realise how strong it was and like you should put like ice and a bit of water in there you know yeah. Yeah. and I just lugged it back and completely burned I was like ah, ah, like completely burning not to mention that you already had like hot sauce on the kebab it was terrible yeah. oh, I have a story for you oh, last good. night okay. oh my <laughs> god so um, we're at the we're at the, is it the dry dock yeah. yeah so we're at the dry dock drinking, chilling getting some food and somebody goes have you seen the Goliath challenge it's like what's that <laughs> we look up on the board and basically this Goliath challenge is a burger and one of our it's basically like a can you eat this in 20 minutes and if you can it'll be free so our guitar guy was like yeah you know I reckon, I reckon I reckon yeah, I'll show you the make, make it brighter Bullshit. Um, <laughs> we, we should set up. So this is Paul Glover. Paul Glover is our guitar tech. He's also he was the first guy chosen by Steve Vai to be uh, to be given a scholarship, and he's an insane guitar player. He's actually playing before most of our gigs to a backing track, and he's from Liverpool. Mm -hmm. So I'll bring this to the camera. This is the this is the Goliath Burger. So the Goliath Burger was, the challenge was, can you eat this in 20 minutes? And if you can, you get it for free. So what you got with the Goliath Burger was one pork burger. This is all in one burger. Okay. One pork burger, two six ounce beef burgers, one chicken breast, southern fried chicken, bacon, salad, onion rings, mega hot sauce in a crusty loaf. Note, not a bun, a loaf. <laughs> with a triple portion of cheesy chips. Now I think it says a lot about our crew. <laughs> and, that, and that's in 20 minutes in 20 but, minutes but he didn't finish it but he would have done if he'd had another 10 minutes and wow. I think I think that sums up the Dorje ethos yeah mm -hmm. eat as much meat as you can in as short a space of time as possible and this morning we back to your mum again huh? <laughs> <laughs> M to the F don't even touch me I'll blag in mantis you all uh, um, apparently, been, apparently Glover woke up in the middle of the night on the bus needing, yeah. needing, to, needing to, to void the bowels yeah get rid and, of uh, the, the six <laughs> yeah, you, 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 no you can't Re go on a bus so. remove the six souls he trying to get out of his body he shut in a bag <laughs> <laughs> I think that remains to say that I've been Rob Chapman I've been Ben Meinl Dave I've been Beer we're Dorje and we'll see you on tour in a bit bye <laughs>